In the name of Jesus Christ, who is at the center of our faith, welcome to worship this morning. It is Palm Sunday, and I am the Reverend Catherine McDonald, the Intentional Interim Minister at Stairs Memorial United Church in the north end of Dartmouth. Uh, this morning, uh, we have Jesse Crabtree, who is reading scripture. Trevor Collisar is our Zoom co-host, and Ryan Gomez uh, shared in a Palm Sunday dramatic reading that we recorded earlier this week. As we gather in this virtual space, no matter where we are in Nova Scotia, we are reminded that we gather on unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. And so may we live with respect on this land and in peace and friendship with its people. So have your branches or whatever you brought with you ready. I just tore a piece of this off my plant because it's prolific and it doesn't matter. I can stick this in some earth and it'll just come back, no problem. <laughs> when they came near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go into the village ahead of you and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with them. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything, say, the Lord needs them, and he sent them immediately. This took place in order to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed were shouting. And so I invite you to repeat after me and start waving those branches. It's going to be noisy and it's going to be chaotic, but so are crowds. Hosanna to the Son of David. Hosanna to the Son of David. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is the one who comes. Blessed is the one who comes. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil. And they were asking, who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. And so I invite you to mute yourselves and we will sing our opening hymn. All glory long and God to you bring in the king to whom the lips of children may sweet hosannas ring you 
We have seen that the stories of Jesus healing ministry are filled with words and deeds. When he rides into Jerusalem, the people had hopes he would heal the oppressive system they were living under. We know that his healing was not confined to that moment in history, but offers a new way of life that has made a case for compassion for all, especially the least of these ever since. As we head into the events of Holy Week, we begin to see that our ability to forgive ourselves and others is the foundation that can transform infirmities and allow us to move on. We integrate our beliefs and actions for the health of the whole. The parade of compassionate power we celebrate today is underscored by all the healing stories of transformation symbolizing our ability to fuel our movement of recovery. We glorify God for beautiful words and works of wholeness and share that treasured beauty with others. We know there will still be pain, but we also know that love will win. Yes, We have approached confession each week in Lent in such a way that we lay bare the brokenness in order to begin the process of healing. Along the way, we have acknowledged our need to restore our own holy vessels while attending to our role in the healing of the community and the world. The work of healing will continue as we integrate all we have learned with all that we are moving forward. For now, we remember how hard it is to move from thinking to doing. Let us pray together. We have opened ourselves to healing and sometimes it is easier to pray nice prayers than to do the hard work of putting into action what needs to happen. Help us remember the sacred nature of the holy vessels that we are fragile and susceptible to shattering, and yet capable of transformation. Help us to see ourselves as you see us. Help us to believe in our ability to change and heal as you believe in us. Help us, healer. Show us our strength. Forgive our inertia. Move us to move, one step at a time towards greater care.
I invite you to return to that warm orb of light that lives deep within you once again. It may already be aglow with the excitement of the parade, the presence of Jesus leading us on. But if you are struggling or have struggled in this season of recovery, feel this warmth of assurance and do not despair. You are not the one who has to create the light. It just is. And it is a pilot light that will never go out. You will notice that it is returning, that it is present at all times. And know this, you are never alone in the struggle. Jesus is on the journey with us no matter what. Life's parade is not passing you by. You are a part of the body of Christ, a community seeking healing for you, for me, for all of us. Take a deep breath and let this truth fill you. And breathe out with the relief of that assurance. I invite you to imagine that that warmth that surrounds you to extend out to whoever might be close to you in proximity in your home. Imagine it extending beyond the walls of your home, to the neighborhood, to the community, to the world. Let it expand and let this be our peace. If you have not already opened your eyes, I invite you to do so. And the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Amen. Jesse is going to share in the scripture reading And I invite you to join me responsively. From Psalm 118, let Israel now say, God's love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, God's love endures forever. Let those who fear God say, God's love endures forever. God is my strength and my song. God has become my salvation. There are shouts of joy and deliverance in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of God does mighty things. The right hand of God raises up. The right hand of God does mighty things. I shall not die, but live, and I shall proclaim what God has done. God indeed punished me, but did not give me over to death. Open me to the gates of the temple, that I may enter and give thanks to God. This is the gate of God, though it is the righteous shall enter. I thank you, for you have answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is God's doing, marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, O God, we pray. God, we pray, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of God. We bless you from the house of God. 
God, our God, has given us light. With palm branches in hand, let us march to the altar. You are my God, and I will thank you. You are my God, and I will extol you. Now a reading from Zechariah 9, verses 9 and 10. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he. Humble and riding on a donkey. On a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow will be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. Thank you, Jesse. As I said earlier, Ryan and I recorded a dramatic reading earlier in the week but we are also prepared that if the recording does not work, we both have our script in front of us, and so we can just jump in and do it live if necessary. We were there that first Palm Sunday part of the 1 million Jews on pilgrimage from every nation far and near to the great Pass festival of Passover, heading to the very place every heart most wanted to be, the holy city of Jerusalem at the temple of Yahweh. We were all singing songs as we climbed the steps, the steep roads of Mount Zion, songs like Psalms 118. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief Okay, folks, you probably weren't seeing anything, were you? No. Okay, we're going to try that one more time because I think I made a mistake. I think it's all here. I just think I made a mistake. I know that's hard to believe, right? We were there that first Palm Sunday, part of the one million Jews on pilgrimage from every nation far and near, to the great Pass festival of Passover, heading to the very place every heart most wanted to be, the holy city of Jerusalem at the temple of Yahweh. We were all singing songs as we climbed the steps, the steep roads of Mount Zion, songs like Psalms 118. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. That is when we saw you. Well, we almost didn't see you except for the children. Surrounding you like a sea of palms, waving their branches, running back and forth, shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, making such a racket that older folks sought to squelch them. 
but you as always defended them. If the children do not shout, the rocks and stones themselves will start to sing. Finally, we realized it was you we had been singing about. You, the one we had been waiting for. A king like David, who will war against our enemies and make our nation powerful and proud again. Who will make everyone believe in our religion the way we believe. Yes, you, the Messiah, who will deliver the miracles our lives need and make the wicked suffer what they deserve, capital punishment on crosses. But why are you riding on that donkey? Why are you not driving a four horse chariot or being carried by slaves in a carriage like a king? Why this slow, dumb beast of burden? Others have said you teach in new ways, always opening eyes through telling parables. Is this a parable too? A parable you are enacting? That must be it. Yes, the donkey from the prophet Zechariah in verse 9. The way in which Jerusalem will see its king arrive. You've chosen that strange prophecy to fulfill. Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey. But this is not the kind of Messiah we expected. The peace of leader Zechariah, he will cut off the chariot and war horse and battle bow, and he shall command peace to all the nations. Is this your parable to us? To teach us to see the glory of God in the ordinary? To see the power of God not through speed and force, but in unturning, unswerving movement. To see the might of God in a humility so perfect no legion could battle it. Without saying a word, you are teaching us yet again, teaching us to recognize where and how the Holy comes riding into our lives. It is in its surprising forms. As you ride past us, our head is telling us, be careful, don't get too involved, stay safely in the shadows. But our hearts are pounding within us, say, saying, do it, make the commitment, and for once in your life, shout. And we, and shout. we shout. Some of us even run ahead of him, and we tear off our coats and we lay them on the road. No longer are we spectators of a holy celebrity. We have become participants in the inauguration of the kingdom of God, and we have said yes. And I'd invite Jesse with our second scripture reading. Thank you. 
Here now, Luke chapter 19, 28 through 40. After he had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethphage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples saying, go into the village ahead of you. And as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus. And after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen saying, blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. Thanks, Jesse. Palm um, Sunday was a long time ago. In our time, we are still waiting for something. For I did the same thing. Okay, bear with me. Palm Sunday was a long time ago. In our time, we are still waiting for something, for someone. And even though we place our faith in you, Jesus, we wonder why the world hasn't changed as you said it could. Why? Why do governments and religions still battle and oppress? Why are we still such a divided world? Where is the kingdom of God that you promised? And who is to blame? I have come to know that change happens so slowly, God. But I don't know what I would do if Jesus hadn't ridden that donkey into Jerusalem more than 2,000 years ago. For that image, a man fused with the power of God facing down the powers and principalities. A man strong enough, filled enough, holy enough to ride in such a into such a storm and face derision and betrayal like he was about to. He is my cornerstone, the foundation of all I hope for, the image of the invisible God. How could I ever face the evils of this world? If I wasn't shown how and why and where, for you still come riding into our lives. You arrive on our doorstep unannounced, and we cannot help but rush out from behind the closed doors to embrace you. You ride into our lives and hear the things we cannot say, 
you touch our wounds and say, hide them no more. They will heal others. You pick up the fragments and failures of our lives and fuse them together into a new sculpture, a pattern of meaning that you say was always there within our clay yearning to emerge. You come riding into our world and declare that time of fear is over. We don't have to hate anymore. You ride into a nation without heroes and heroines and awaken within the most common among us heroic, heroic qualities of courage and deeds of truth. You ride in our society beset by addictions of need and offer to fill empty spaces with exuberant aliveness. You ride into a culture possessed by possessions and you free us by saying, the Lord has need of that. Imagine that. You ride into nations and communities locked in combat where somehow you bring enemies together into reconciling communities out of which a future is born. You ride into places where people are forced to live without shelter or food or medical care. And you, Jesus, stay there until those of us that have so much wonder where you are. And then when we come to find you, we come to find out why. Now you are leaving, going on before us. We can see you nearing the top of a ridge and our last and best voice we call out to you, beloved teacher, savior, Lord, ride on into the lives of our children and their children. Ride on, give a moment of hope to all those who need it. Ride on to make our city a new Jerusalem where God's will is our will. Ride on, for you are our love and our prayers. And we won't forget what you taught us. Ride on, Lord Jesus, for you won't be alone. For, your, for in your name, we will too. Ride on. Let us pray. Healer of our every ill, especially when we find it difficult to believe or trust that sorrow will end, we come before you to make our petitions known. Hear our cries for healing of body, mind, and spirit. We know that already you are at work among us showing us the way to recovery from the grief of our time. Even when we cannot seem to believe it, we know that you see beauty in our brokenness. We pray especially for those who feel that there is no end to sorrow, that no matter what we do or how hard we work to bring peace and justice to, to our world, it feels as if we cannot gain traction. We give thanks that when we cannot bring ourselves to the healing source of your love, 
There are others around us that through words and actions bring us hope once again. Help us to also be those who offer hope when we have the opportunity on this parade of compassion called life. Lord Christ, as you make your humble way this week, we offer you the strength of our own prayers that we may not betray you, that we will be by your side, that we will not run away from your mission. Help us to understand that your way is now our way. And that because of you, we never need fear the powers and the principalities, the forces that try and throw you from your humble throne. And today we pray especially for Nellie Clyke, who mourns the death of a cousin. May God surround her with love and may we surround her with love as she learns to live in a world without her cousin. We turn to one another and we turn to you. We turn to Jesus who taught his first followers to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In your love, make us whole. May we rest in your compassion on the lost we restore. In the warmth of your love, may your peace fill us. May we There are many ways that we can offer ourselves for the healing of the world. We can offer our hands, we can offer our hearts, we can offer our heads. And so I invite you to take a moment to think of how you might offer yourselves this week in particular for the healing of the world. O oh God, we know that you bless all of our gifts. May they be used wisely. May they tend the sick and the lonely and the lost and the frightened. And may these gifts accompany Jesus upon this week into Jerusalem and beyond. Amen. Jesus' enter, entry into Jerusalem was a sign to the people that they were worthy to be saved. 
the meaning of the cries, Hosanna, courage in the face of difficulty. Care in the face of the disheartened go hand in hand. Healing is not an absence of illness, but rather a trust that God holds our brokenness and we can move, move on in life with assurance, making beauty out of what is at hand. As you look back on this season of healing that we focused on healing, what is it that you learned that you want to carry into the future through your words and actions? Take a moment to think about that. Imagine all the greening that is going to take place outside in the coming weeks. What is growing and bursting with life within you and within us together? And together we will travel on. <clears throat> travel on, travel on, there's a spirit that is flowing, a spirit that is flowing night and day. Travel on, travel on, with the spirit that is flowing, the spirit will be with us all the way. Travel on, travel on, with the river that is flowing, the spirit will be with us all the way. Growing, the spirit grows like flowers night and day. Travel on, travel on with the spirit that is growing. The spirit will be with us all the way. Travel on, travel on with the flower that is growing. The spirit will be with us all the way. The spirit plays like music every day. Travel on, travel on with the spirit that is playing. The spirit will be with us all the way. Travel on, travel on with the music that is playing. The spirit will be with us all the way. In this Holy Vessel series, we have seen that Jesus' actions, Jesus' healing actions often got buzz from his onlookers. onlookers. His words and actions <clears throat> seem to get one or the other, praise or accusations of heresy, but he continued his work anyway. He loved those who were deemed unlovable. He proclaimed healing in the midst of despair. He urged people to give their bets best in the midst of the worst circumstances. To be followers of Jesus is not an easy task, but it is the way in which we become whole again. To participate in the holy endeavor of bringing the kingdom of heaven to earth. As we enter Holy Week, these things will come into sharp focus May we follow him, even into the broken places. And so now go with confidence that God is making us whole and holy, recovering the depth of our love for all and for all the world. May the words of Jesus ring in your ears, take heart, 
and may the spirit hover, move, and deliver healing to your soul and a spring to your step. So just a couple of announcements. Um, Monday, Thursday service is at 7 p.m. Good Friday is at 3 p.m. And then Easter Sunday with communion is at 1030. All of those will be also via Zoom and Facebook Live. Um, Susan Colasar has offered to do Monday, Thursday and Good Friday. So. If you're not able to be there in person, you will be able to access those um, online. Oh, if you didn't get your art canvas in, you still have time. If you can drop it off to the church by Wednesday, it can be still included in the community art project, which will be unveiled on, uh, which day? Uh, Easter Sunday. So just those two announcements. <laughs> 